right then we've got the um, hydrogen we've got our hydrogen our oxygen and our sulfur and as I stated in the last video they are not lined up so what I like to do is minimize <clears throat> these uh, images and typically because the hydrogen data is so much stronger I use it as a reference image uh, to align the oxygen and sulfur um, so we can minimize that as well and to find the star line of the tool we're going to come over here to process all processes whoops and everything is alphabetized so in the S's you have the star alignment tool it's pretty easy to use we're going to take this HA data we're going to drag it over here and we're going to drop it as our reference image and then we can highlight the sulfur and oxygen and drag those over here into the big box and these are the two images that are going to be aligned to this image and then you uh, click apply global and let pics inside do its thing pretty easy alright so the oxygen is uh, rendering in here that's a new image and now the sulfur's done and it will label it registered see the difference uh, so if we minimize that you see it says S2 registered so you know if you're working on images and you think you might want to go back and rework on them later you know try your hand at it again uh, you want to save these registered images uh, they are in the linear state so you know they're not stretched um, we're just applying applying a stretch preview there so let's go here file save as I'm gonna drop down here in the file type and I'm gonna save that as an X I S F and we are in that uh, processing folder so s2 registered click save we'll leave it as a 32-bit and we'll minimize it and let's do a stretch preview on the oxygen and come in here to file save as 03 registered already as an X I S F that's hard to say uh, and save so it is a 32-bit and we're done and we can come over here push that HA up on top since that was our reference image highlight those two right click delete selected items and now those two unregistered images now you see we've got these little lines here but if we hit our double square to size it <clears throat> and we bring in our HA do the same thing apply the oxygen over it see now they're lined up okay uh, so the next step is we want to crop these images and obviously our HA was our reference frame so it, it really doesn't have any of those cropping black you know rotation black bands so we're not going to look at that one we're going to look at our worst one so let's open up oxygen grab it down here in this little blue box right in here in the corner and you can see these little where it's rotated it so that's pretty bad let's see how bad our uh, sulfur is so it looks like our sulfur let's make that box a little bit smaller expand it zoom out you see how we've got more of this uh, rotation uh, banding in here I'm not sure what to call it the blackness so this is going to be our image that we are going to set our dynamic crop tool and then we will apply that dynamic crop to our other two images uh, so where we want to find that tool at is back up here in process and we're going to come down to geometry and dynamic crop and we're going to hit the reset button see when you hover over it says reset reset <clears throat> puts a gray box over your image and as I've said in other videos you can rotate it or you can um, retract it so the way to do that is just hover this little uh, box and when you've got that little pop out box right there just click on it bring it in 
click on it, bring it in. We're just going to bring in all four sides until we like it. And the reason we would do the worst one is we wouldn't want to do the best one and then come down here and try to apply this box and we may have a band in here that we may not catch. So we want to pick our worst or most rotated image and use it as our guide for dynamic crop. So with that, I want to try to get as much of this image as I can. So I like that. You can also just come right here in the middle of the field and click it and kind of move this box around. So if we're happy with that, we are not going to initiate it by hitting the check button. We're going to grab this instance and pull it off. So this box, this size, and this orientation is all that information is right here in this instance. And I like to drag this down and save it. And I could right click on it and um, set icon identifier and give it a name. I typically don't because I'm lazy. Um, but once I've done that, I've taken this box and all this information that's on this instance, I can close down dynamic crop. Yes. I'm going to just drag it over and drop it on top. Done. So we can minimize our sulfur and then drag it over to our oxygen, drop it on top. Minimize our oxygen and drag it over onto our hydrogen data and that's it so all of these items are these uh, images all three of them have uh, now been star lined and cropped so they are identical identical name that movie in your head while you're watching this give you a clue rhymes with Vinny Ooh, that was a little too much of a clue Anyway, uh, so yes, yeah, so see how we hover over transparent. They are the exact same size. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to move over to uh, using the next tool, which is uh, dynamic background extraction. We're going to clean up that background of our HA. Um, and just really quick here. One thing that I want to explain before we go any further is this image is linear. And the way we know that this image is linear, it's not stretched, is if we hit the F12, it goes black. So this tool here that's called the screen transfer function, or this kind of quicker way to do it is right here. This is just, it's going to apply that auto stretch. But here you have the ability to kind of adjust your auto stretch. When you click that nuclear button there see I can roll in I can scroll in on this uh, K band here and move these sliders around and really adjust how that's stretched or I can reset it and hit it again all this do all this tool is doing is applying a preview of what the stretch would look like if you permanently stretch this image that's it it's not actually manipulating your data it's just a preview to what it's going to look like so just wanted to explain that really quick so I hope you join me for the uh, next video where we're going to do a uh, dynamic background extraction, clean the background up. That's a really cool tool. And uh, combine these in the SHO Hubble palette and start doing some, uh, some processing, some stretching and color manipulation. All right. Thanks for watching.